Welcome one and all to my Fire Emblem 8 Reverse Recruitment America Route Patch Low Turn Count Playthrough. This is Typhoon Carter and uh, the rules of this run is that we will be doing incomplete re recruitment and I will set every character's gross to 100% gross. If they have gross exceeding 100%, they will be set to 200%. And uh, we will be going Erica route for this run, true to the patch that LT rank made originally. Uh, and then Burr here actually had one change made to her, where she doesn't have her Dragonstone, which is limited in how many uses she has. Instead, she has a infinite use Dragonstone that is an iron weapon, basically, and a rapier stone, which is buffed up from the dragon stone by one might, as well eight might, and slight and ten more hit. Uh, prologue cleared in one turn, and uh, but Cyrene here, who replaces Seth, is fairly important. She comes with dual A rank in both swords and lances. She's basically her her basis is pretty much that of her vanilla counterpart. And which is really good for this point in the game, considering she's a flyer, which is even more useful than Seth in that regard. She does she doesn't quite one hit KO these fighters much like Seth could potentially do in uh, vanilla, but like this will do because like this will set up kills for do so and no. The ladder who does need to be promoted eventually. No here replaces Gilliam, so his base level is actually pretty high, so, and raising him won't be too much of a hassle. Uh, do so, his bases are actually worse than friends in vanilla, at least like when D level. But he'll still see some use here. Uh, Cyrene here has about 73 displayed hit on the boss, and she actually misses one of them. But uh, that's okay. More EXP for Cyrene to get. Uh, Murr here could one round KO one of these soldiers, but it won't matter too much as far as her EXP goes. She'll have more than sufficient chances to get kills later. Murr's flight definitely makes her a lot more flexible as the Lord compared to Erica. <laughs> At least for this run. And then Cyrene just cleans up the boss and gets her first level up. And uh, that will be chapter 1 cleared in 3 turns. Anyways, we get 5,000 gold, <laughs> which uh, is nice. We don't have to worry about money too much in this game. Funds aren't really that tight. Anyways, uh, we have chapter 2 here. This map can be free turned in vanilla, and in here is much, very much the same case, but the reliability here is far better, especially on the bosses since we don't have to worry about Vanessa breaking a really crappy critical on the boss in the map, on mountain terrain for that matter. But uh, it's still somewhat unreliable because we don't have too reliable of a way to deal with the uh, brigand reinforcements which will show up later on this map. Uh, the two green units we have here is Sally and Ewan who will do more than enough to hold out on their own and Sally who replaces Garcia is even more buffed up. Uh, we also have Cormac who replaces Motor so his base level is like fairly decent. And uh, getting, you'll be very important throughout the entirety of this run. And then we have Cyrene with her steel sword getting ready to take on the boss, at least for the upcoming fire phase. And then, yeah, the mountain brigands are actually 
really awful to deal with. No has about sub 50 hit hit on one of the brigands. And then we. Yeah, anyway, so I decided to speed up the editing. I sped up the RN burns just so you don't have to sit there for like 30 minutes watching me trying to get this down. Um, her was unfortunately a point short. If I had fed her a kill, it might have been less painful, but it is what it is. Cormac gets the pure water. Cyrene just deals with this boss. Uh, and then, unfortunately, uh, Renak is probably our best shot at taking out the other brigand. And uh, we get do so to just get her out of there. Anyways, so yeah, Renak has about like 3% chance to like crit the brigand, but luckily he can double him, so he has two shots to do it. His hit's actually fairly okay. But uh, yeah, that's chapter 3 2 cleared in 3 turns. And then we get Dazla here for chapter 3. He's basically a free pirate for chapter 7, so we don't have to train him up ever. Renak... Uh, didn't get too much of a chance to talk about Renak so far, but like, Renak will be fairly helpful in the early game for some instances. But much like Kong, his usefulness will kind of wear out past the first split. And for this chapter, it's also a... In vanilla, it's a 4 turn, but like, we can match this fairly comfortably. Okay, Sally faces a Hand Axe Brigand and an Archer. There is a chance that like, if he gets hit by both of them, which is unlikely, especially by the Brigand who has about, like, a hit rate in the 30s for displayed, he could die, but... All is good. Oh, we get Lara Shell here, who comes with an unlock staff, thankfully, so we don't actually have to worry about about door keys, unlike Vanilla, at least in compared to at least for FE8, because the unlock staff isn't available until after the route split. Having an early unlock staff is just very nice, especially here. That's a nice way to build up staff rank too for our shell, although we don't have too many chances to do it, but it's nice nonetheless. And then we have do so set up a kill for Cormag because Cormag needs a lot of them, needs all the levels. He wants to be level 10 by chapter 8, which is fairly doable. And then Sal Sally and Cyrene are pretty much doing the bulk of the work for this chapter. Everyone else is mostly self-improving. Now I hesitate here for a second because I need to figure out how to place Cyrene. Cyrene has to be in it, has to go the way she does for the upcoming enemy phase. And Sally as well, for targeting purposes. And then one thing I do want to mention is that GBA AI is sometimes a little bit inconsistent as far as how they approach. Now that friggin' you're guarding the entrance to like the boss will go for Siren regardless, that's the only one she can reach, but the Hand Axe friggin' for some reason decided to target Sally, most likely because Sally has lower defenses. Although it's very inconsistent as far as how they approach it, given that normally you'd think that, hey, if the unit doesn't have 1 to 2 range counter, then hey, they'll go for the unit who doesn't have that, but they don't do that here. For some, sometimes they'll prioritize defense, and uh, as we get some chess here, but uh, from my understanding, some they have sort of a priority system that goes by points. I'm guessing 
the most likely explanation is that that brigand on the previous enemy phase just didn't have, just didn't gather enough points in their priority ranking to like really go for Cyrene over Sally. And Sally is also frailer, so that probably helps too. Uh, we just get a couple more treasure chests. Uh, Murr actually gets attacked by this mercenary who she gets doubled by, but she takes it like a boss. Uh, Cyrene here actually was equipped with an iron sword so that she didn't immediately kill Vazba. But uh, we do this to maximize her EXP gain. And this will be very important later on. We have to be somewhat weary of how we go about Cyrene getting experience because there are benchmarks she has to hit later. And also because like Cyrene gains experience slower than like said the other units due to her being a pre-promote. At least this early. Uh, everyone else is mostly just self-improving. Lara Shell is getting her staff rank in. Uh, Lara Shell unfortunately has D staves, which kind of sucks, as uh, our warp options in Incomplete kind of just stinks, at least in Erica patch. Uh, Sally here gets a last minute kill, as uh, we just clean this map up. Uh, yeah, that'll be chapter 3 cleared in 4 turns. And I will see you guys next time.